Hi, my name's Mark, and today we're going to review our ARB Simpson 3 rooftop tent. We've had it for more than five years, and we've given it a heck of a workout with in excess of 200 nights. We've given it a workout in cold, in rain, heavy rain, and high winds. And that's why the uh, rain fly is off right now, is because we have in excess of 40 to 50 kilometer an hour winds forecast for today and yesterday as well. And that's why I took it off last night so I could get a night's sleep. But we'll get into that more and you can take a look at some of the mods we've had to make and repairs. But uh, let's get started and let's get in with the review. Okay, first off, let's take a look at the performance of the tent in the wind. You can see already the flapping of the window vestibule. It, uh, it flexes and the material of the tent is quite heavy. It's probably one of the heavier materials on rooftop tents of most of the brands. That's what makes the weight of the tent so heavy. But the fly is very light and it doesn't cover much of the tent just along the roof. But when you take the fly off, it really does make a substantial difference and it can handle pretty good winds without being too cumbersome. Sometimes it's better with the vestibules up and sometimes down. What you don't want to do is have the tent facing sideways at a 90 degree angle. In other words, have the wind coming from where we're looking. That would be a bad mistake because it's a flat wall and it really starts to pulse and you can actually rock the Jeep if it's side to side. In extreme wind, I will pull those down, although they can flap a little more. The fly itself rolls up nice when I take it off and I just slide it in flat in the back of the Jeep. If I have to choose in a complete downpour without too heavy winds, I'll take the fly up. But if it's really howling and you know, the, the rain's going to get under there anyway. So also, you really need to uh, understand that this wind issue is really an issue with rooftop tents in general. As you can see, we've changed the ladder from the factory ladder. We've gone to a compressing ladder that uh, is, is, I think, much better suited to rooftop tents. The factory ladder was just two pieces of metal, aluminum, and it was extruded and it used to slide in tracks with each other. Dust and sand would get in there. It wouldn't slide very good at all. Um, it was really difficult actually to slip around. Uh, the pinholes that you used, they had like a spring-loaded pin that used to snap into a hole to hold it in position. Uh, it was always hard to get those to go in and uh, on any long trip you'd really kind of fight with it. You know, you could clean it up and spray some lubricant in there, but that just attracts dust. It's a poor design and I didn't like it at all. When you lifted the Jeep, then I needed a third little 12-inch piece I would have had to buy. I said, given all the problems, I threw it out. It didn't last very long and I didn't like it from day one. The change wasn't bad and I do have uh, a video that covers the tips for the rooftop tents and in there I show you, uh, I show you about the change of this ladder. As you can see, I used most of the hardware to change the ladder out. This wasn't that difficult to do and uh, I had to make some modifications, but nothing serious that anybody could really do. The next thing is that I don't like about the tent is that it has these bungees here that this one is for the, it goes this way and holds the fly as it wraps around. And this one holds the vestibule down once it's in the folded position. And as you can see, they've almost fully stretched out and they don't, they're, they're, they take nothing, uh, you know, to, put, to stretch. They are useless, really. They do hold it in position once they come way out to here, but of course in the wind, it's just doing this. And in the wind, it's just doing this, or it just doesn't hold things in position. Uh, could this be fixed? I probably will get it into a tent and awning company that sew some new ones in, but uh, it's a poor feature and uh, I don't like it at all. It could have been done better, for sure. One of the things I really don't like about the ARB system that they use in straps and things like that. They're all Velcro. 
really. Uh, they use a simple strap like this, which this one is attached underneath and it's part of the cover system. Uh, it's one of the, it's what holds the straps. And you can see here, you've got Velcro here and the other piece here. They use these on the awning. They use these on the rooftop tents and the covers. It's, it's quite a few places. Uh, and I'll show you and we'll go into it in more detail, but all they do is they go through a, a D-ring, right? That's on another strap or just sewn to the material itself as the awning was. And then it just folds over and <laughs> that's it. Now, there is some protection here, but that's with my hand, right? These disintegrate over time and they become useless. The, the, you can see how the uh, sewing is kind of cheap and chinzy. Uh, after five years, I'm surprised these haven't just turned to pot dust, but uh, they need to be changed. Now, ARB will sell you more of these, uh, don't waste your time. Come up with a new system and there are ways. Generally one of the things I've been doing is just take cutting the stitching off, getting rid of the Velcro in some instances and or replacing the strap altogether. Um, but it's a bad system. Let's just be clear. It's not strong and it gets very weak with, with age and you know the elements, right? Because it's in the elements all the time. So, like I say, they'll sell you them don't waste your time. It's a bad system and it's ongoing. This is the hold down system that they use uh, in a lot of the straps. So this is how they're attaching them to the frame of the uh, tent in different locations. Uh, they use basically uh, screws that go through and compress the uh, nylon um, strap into position. Uh, this one, for example, is the one when the tent folds over the strap went through from the frame on the other it's corresponding side on the other side come back down and the velcro hold it well that didn't work that's a whole other thing we're going to talk about in a minute but you can see the screws they use this actually holds very well like it's very strong I, i'm not faulting that what i'm talking about is the guy who's put these screws in all over this tent probably 25 percent plus of these screws are stripped out and I can't take them off properly. So that's one of the reasons some of these things I haven't changed is I've had to, I would have had to, to drill these out or do some serious damage to other things and I'm, I'm looking at other options. But um, as they fail, I've been taking them off and or changing them or doing something to be more appropriate. And this is a good example of that. But if you strip out the screw in the manufacturing process, you really take a bad design in the first place and just make it really bad. So the quality on the tent in some time in places is really good and in others the workmanship sucks and I can't say that strong enough. Now I want to say it's stronger but I want to keep a G rating on this video. ARB you can do a lot better. If you don't know how call me. I'll straighten it out for you. While we're looking at this piece you'll notice it only originally had one uh, D-ring and then what happened was the strap went through and then stuck against itself. Well, knowing that system doesn't work, what I did was, as an example of how I've modified things in different ways, is I put a second D-ring on here. I actually changed them both to a little bit stronger one. But so now what happens is it goes through, comes back through this way like you would do on a motorcycle helmet and holds it in position. So when it's flapped over, I can actually pull it down and hold it. The problem was any kind of push up from inside of the uh, tent from let's say your pillows or whatever, it wouldn't hold down properly. Not that it's over stuff, but it, it, it took nothing for it to push up. You know, any kind of weight on one side would kind of tilt up the other side, it just it's natural. It would. Um, not work. So having a, a doing a dual D-ring system allowed it to go through down and hold like a belt buckle would in some situations or whatever and it holds very well. Okay this is now a couple things that I like about the tent and they do a really good job. In my opinion there's a two really different types of well there's three kind of general types of rooftop tents. 
There's one that does not have this vestibule that sticks out over the ladder. that just comes down like this and goes up. Then there's another type that has the vestibule that has this bar that actually you twist and it collapses and it is held out by the bar. So in other words, it puts a lot of rigidity up on the tent. Like that. And the third type is one that doesn't have this bar or this system. It has guy lines that go from here down to the ground. Now in my opinion, we won't talk about the smaller tent with the uh, upright that doesn't have this vestibule. The vestibule is nice because it gives you some area that as long as it's not raining too hard and otherwise the rain will hit your back right about this position. <laughs> but normally it is nice to have that. Um, it gives you a little bit extra space. Uh, there's a negative. It, it sort of traps the dew from the ground when it rises up, especially if you've got the flap open at night. But this lowers the noise a, a, a lot as well. And the vestibule itself has, won't um, come loose on the ground. When does that happen? When it rains a lot. The ground gets soft and any kind of wind will push it around. So, and then it flops around. Uh, it's not to hold the tent. This weight holds it itself. It's not coming over. I don't think, I've even seen this thing twitch with that kind of lifting power. But what happens is this holds it better than the other system. It also holds the fly out a little bit better. Uh, and I really like this type of system. But again, they've used very flimsy um, bungee cord here, or more like tape, really. It's not very, very strong at all. Although it's still got some life left in it, but it's usually not under the sun. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the material that the tent is made of itself. And it's made of a very heavy canvas with a little bit of nylon, it seems. A lot of the lighter weight tents, and this one is a heavy one for sure, uh, one of the heavier ones. But the lighter ones are more nylon than canvas. This would be considered a canvas tent. And when it gets wet, it has characteristics like canvas. The sewing and construction itself is very good. There's a, another problem that happens to all uh, um, tents, whether it be ground tents, uh, the best uh, North Face tents, or you know any kind of a rooftop tent, it really doesn't matter. And that's the coating they put on the seams on the inside. That's a maintenance item that has to be changed. And this tent, after five years, is in, in desperate need of that. And we'll take a look at that next. The seam tape that they use for waterproofing the seams has started to peel off uh, on quite a few locations inside of the tent. Now, granted, it's been pretty good for the, it's just this year it started to come off. Um, doesn't really harm it, but it's good to have it. So uh, what you do, like within any tent, is there's a, you can actually put another, it's a, it's a chemical coat that you just paste over the, and it does basically the same thing. This is a factory tape, but you can actually buy in uh, backpack stores and so on some uh, seam tape that allows you to just kind of brush it over and uh, it dries and it goes clear. Um, and I'll do that. Uh, even normal good quality North Face tents, four season ones have to have that done after a while as, as, as well. It's just one of those maintenance things, but um, this one seems to have started all at once. So that's a summer project. Uh, it's a little cool at night here to do it. So we'll do it in the near future. Now we'll talk about the mattress. The mattress comes is a two inch uh, foam pad that's pretty dense and it has a cover that is nylon. It is not a cloth material. It does has a zipper to take it off, although it looks kind of troublesome to do. Um, and it's, it's a pretty tight fit. But the nylon would not be the best to sleep on directly. That's why we made a uh, pad and uh, if you haven't watched the video 
10 t quick tips for rooftop tents, then I suggest you watch that now. I'll put a link in the card above. It shows you how we deck out the inside of the tent and how we've made a, uh, uh, a mattress pad that works really good. Um, and, and it's amazing actually what you can store in here. And that's the next thing. The mattress isn't too comfortable uh, I would say on a scale of a 10, I would give it a five. Uh, my wife finds it more uncomfortable than I do. Um, but um, it's, it's manageable, but I do find I flip around a little bit. It's a little bit firm. We have added a uh, one inch memory foam, memory foam uh, pad that's the size of the mattress, but we folded it in half and it's only on the top half. That gives us another two inches of memory foam uh, that compresses down. And that leads to another thing. The amount of stuff that we can actually store in the tent when it's folded over is surprising. I've got to say, and in that video that I just mentioned, uh, watch it and you'll be amazed at, at the stuff we can put in there. It's got some other tips for rooftop tents in general uh, and I, I encourage you to watch that. As far as putting the tent up and taking it down, um, it's, it's really pretty easy to flip it over or, or fold it back up. It's not a complicated system to do and I would say the ARB tent can handle two people jumping up and down up there if we so chose to do. Uh, it, it does work pretty good and uh, I, I gotta say that all in all, the uh, process is, is pretty good. I can, I can do it myself as well. Uh, with two people, it goes real fast. Uh, add another couple minutes if you're doing it yourself, but it's probably one of the better rooftop tents to fold up, I think. As far as all of the zippers and mosquito mesh and openings as in general, they're all very good, actually. The mosquito mesh is very fine and uh, about as fine as I've ever seen. It's still durable. Um, the zippers all on the main body of the tent have performed excellently. There's there's no problem with them at all and they're quite heavy duty. Uh, they do have metal little um, poles on them which is nice except that if they're together at night and there's a little bit of wind and the, the tent's moving a bit they kind of go tink 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 tink. Uh, plastic might have been a little bit quieter but that's uh, neither here nor there I guess. This is a new cover we put on this year. It uh, the other one didn't fail as far as the main body it's very heavy material it's very heavy uh, we did see some splitting here but that's because it's it's actually so heavy material that when you fold it back to get the zipper going around the corner this kind of gets pulled a lot and the stitching kind of came apart here and that's no big deal the way it works because it's below the zipper anyway and we never had problems with the tent getting wet from infiltration or being real fluffy on the roof or whatever it's a very heavy, heavy, heavy uh, vinyl material that works. And the, the zipper is uh, pretty good. It's, it's quite strong. That's what failed uh, the last time. Um, it actually failed uh, up here in this area here at the beginning where it starts and then it comes around, right? So here it, it started to really get chew, chewed up here. Um, and that's mostly because of just wear and tear. This has had a lot of use. Uh, the good thing is it wasn't expensive at all to replace it. And uh, the good thing about ARB is that the um, parts for these things is very affordable and they, you can get parts for your tent even in North America. In summary, would I buy the tent again? If I could, if I, this one got stolen and I had to go get another rooftop tent would I buy this one? The answer is no, I wouldn't. Do I think it's a terrible tent? No, it's probably overall one of the toughest tents as far as the core of the tent. Can most of the problems be fixed and tweaked? And yeah, they can. These aren't cheap. Um, it's made in Australia and Shipping costs a long way, like all of them do. There's some from South Africa uh, as well, the easy, the, I think it's easy on. Uh, that's the one I'd take a serious look at if I was looking again. Uh, I think a lot of the North American ones are light and not really that, um, 
um, good in wind conditions. Uh, they are meant to uh, not put such a burden of load on the Jeep or vehicle as well, which is a good thing, I guess. Um, I don't know what I'd do if I had to replace this one. I'd probably take a serious look at the Easy On. I was going to look at that, but I bumped into this one and I could pick it up at a reasonable price and I didn't have to ship it. So I found it locally, which was odd, and it was new. But I don't think I'd buy it again. Uh, on a scale of four, four being, or five, five being the best, five star, I'd give it three and a half. Um, but am I going to change it? No, because it's still a very good tent and I am happy with it. I don't want that to come through. But if I'm putting it up against my experiences and it's mostly all of the accessory stuff around it, and it's not necessarily the core of the tent. I'd also look at the Ursa Minor uh, system for the Jeep. I think they're really good. They are really expensive, but that may be a good option. Uh, one of the reasons I say that is if you've been watching my videos, you'll know that it does. It takes me less than a minute to take everything but the fridge out of the back. It, it just happens like that. And I set up my camp outside, so having it set up inside doesn't matter to me. And there is some advantage there would be in this type of configuration to be added to with the Ursa Minor, which is a flip-up tent. And I think they have some advantages. The negative is I lose my storage in the Pelican case up there. And that's the fourth case in the system. And that's where I carry all the outside stuff like recovery gear. I don't have to put muddy stuff in there and I can take the pressure washer and hose it out. Um, and it's a great place for the solar panel, although on the top of a Ursa Minor, it would do that. So if you want to know what a guy like me is thinking about him, then um, yeah, I'd have to say the rooftop tent, the ARB is, is uh, mixed blessings. Um, do I regret buying it? No. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please subscribe and uh, hit the bell if you want to get notifications. Occasionally we'll put an extra video in a week and it'll just help you know when that comes. You get an email. But thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.